Hi everyone, thanks again for joining. Okay, my name is Moin. I am one of the traders in this server. Okay, same like you guys, nothing extraordinary, nothing special. I'm learning as we are all learning, okay, and going forward. Now, before we start, my very, very disclaimer, okay, this is the part that people get bored, that nothing that we say over here or mention in the video is a financial advice. This is more on an educational perspective, and our objective is to make traders out of each and every one of you so that you guys know how to trade okay you are not dependent on any signals or anything okay and you know how to stand on your feet okay so let's get started and my request again let's make this session as interactive as possible okay and feel free to unmute your mics ask me questions on whatever you feel like related to trading okay so let's start who wants to go first Don't be shy, guys and <laughs> ladies. Okay, so this hour is exclusively for you. So let's make the best out of it. You said what now? Sorry, I just, I'm just tuning in. You said choose a stock? I'm sorry? Oh, you said what are we choosing? Choose a stock? You can do this talk. Over? You can ask any questions. Oh, I can go over any charts with you guys as you want. Okay. Feel free to do that. Okay. Okay. Spy? Spy? My favorite one? Sure. Let's do Let's it. Do it. <laughs> All right. Okay. A little bit about myself in case any one of you is attending for the first time. Okay. So as I said, my name is Moin. I have been trading roughly over two and a half years. And I learned trading pretty much by myself to a large extent. And it was not a very easy journey. It still is not. Okay. And I started with the OTCs knowing nothing. And from there onwards, I moved on to small caps where I basically learned my trading. Okay. Made quite a bit of money on that. Then went to do something which I can do every day. Moved on to spy options. Then I discovered futures. And mainly I do futures these days with a little bit of small caps here and there. Okay, so that's that. Tell me, sir, what do you want to know about SPY? <laughs> or what do you want me to look into? First of all, let me ask you guys this, okay? Looking at the chart right here, and there is absolutely no wrong answer, okay? Till we question ourselves, okay, delve deeper we won't ever learn looking at this chart this daily chart what does this tell you guys any volunteers what now yeah so this is a daily chart of spy what is it telling okay. you okay what is it telling me yep oh that prices go up and down okay. they go up and down all right right now if we are looking at it what would be your bias for tomorrow? A bias for tomorrow? Mm hmm. Hmm. Poten hmm. Potential reverse head and shoulders? Okay. Where do you see the head, the shoulder, and the shoulder? Oh, I guess. Is I, it well, I guess that would, Is well, it that... this what you're looking at? Oh, sorry. My drawing is so crappy. So you're looking here, one shoulder, head, and the other shoulder. Uh, well, a reverse to where like the upside down head and shoulders. Okay. My bad. So this is the sh first shoulder. Oh, this is right, the the, right there. That's the first shoulder to the right is the head. This that the bottom. Head. But I mean, I guess that wouldn't play out for like, what, another couple, two weeks or something like that. Exactly. So you need this basically oh. to be another shoulder and then, okay, this to be formed oh. as another shoulder. Okay, all the way coming down here and then moving up. Okay, so that's that's, that's a very, okay. that's a big, big red candle. Probably like, Momentum. you'd see it probably, yep, you should be mm -hmm. seeing it probably like in two to three days okay at the list or maybe never okay could be a double top good answer 
can be a double job absolutely one job second job okay very close yep what else like a lot of selling pressure at the end of the day absolutely no doubt about it order submitted order no. submitted Sorry guys, just oh. give me one second. My bot is running and trying to take trades by itself. Just give me one second to switch this off. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. What else? None of the answers are wrong. You guys are doing great. Okay. Your yellow, is that your VWAP? Uh, no, all the is here, basically you have only the EMAs, you have 9, 20, and 200. My 9 in my charts mm. will always be green, my 20 would be blue, and my yellow is the 200 EMA. Okay, and along with this, you guys might have noticed, I always use like two charts side by side. Target filled. The 1 minute and the 5 minute. Okay. So on the one minute chart, which is my go to chart, basically for trading, that is I have the view up extra. That's it. I don't use any other indicators. Okay, and the oscillator that you see. That's it. Okay. Any idea? Okay, before I ask you guys, and I'm giving you a hint right here. We're approaching the gap. Why spy so fail gap today? Up? Oh. Okay. Keep this in mind, guys, okay? We, all of us here, okay, are very, very small traders. We are retail traders, and we are very small in the grand scheme of things, right? So even if your capital is like you're coming into the market with a capital of like 100,000, okay, or a million, it's nothing, okay? So we are very, very small fish. The market is built in a way, okay, and... It is controlled by the market makers or the big boys or the hedge funds, whatever you want to call them, okay? Our job as retail traders is trying to understand what they are trying to do. We can never be on the top. We can never be on the bottom, right somewhere in between, make our money and go away. The only reason we show up every single day, the only reason all of you guys are here is to make money. I don't think anybody else has an answer here, right? So, and the market is made in a way, okay, that no matter what you read, what you believe, okay, this is my understanding of like being in the market for like three years, that the whole market is manipulated, okay? So, it is up to us to accept it, okay, and to play along. And we'll try to understand like what happens there, to ride on the coattails of the big boys, and to make our dough, okay? Looking at this, okay, that this place where I place my mouse exactly would be a very potential zone for a spy to reverse. It's pretty obvious if you looked at it. Because if you look at it, we were on a winning stretch for quite a number of days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Right here today in the morning, okay, like the moment I saw this gap fill, I was mentally prepared, okay, that today is pretty much a downward day. And the market makers will use any news, any catalyst to their convenience, okay? It doesn't matter whether the news is good, whether the news is bad. It absolutely doesn't matter, okay? Rather think of it, the news is to be used on the direction they want to take the market in, okay? Mr. Powell could say like very good things, but if it is the market makers have decided that they want to take the market down now, the market is going to go down. Okay, so never ever first lesson is never ever think of like interpreting the news. It's a good news. Employment data comes great. Market is going to go up. That doesn't happen that way. Okay, we follow the trend. There are only two things true in this market. One is price there is, and the other is volume. All the indicators that you see, including my very fancy indicators, basically is based on those two things. So the moment you had this gap fill on SPY in the morning, you are potentially looking at a downtrend because what happens that we have the gap fill exactly at 444.44. 44. 
sorry, 440, 438.43, okay, which was the low yeah. of this bar. Okay, if we go back, look at the market, okay, in the pre-market, basically it went a little bit up. The reason of this going up is nothing, is to fake out people, okay, because a lot of people will think, we filled the gap, okay, now market is going to go up. So these guys are not waiting for any confirmation, anything. They're looking at pre-market. They're looking at these levels and they're thinking, okay, right where you see where the gap was, right here, basically we had our first resistance in the pre-market. It failed, okay. From here, basically there was a little bit going up. Okay, this is basically to completely, these two candles you see, are complete fake outs. Okay, so to lure the futures traders like us who were there early in the morning, we could trade because futures is open 23 hours a day, as well as to lure people into thinking, okay, market might be going up. So the moment basically you had this gap fill, okay, you were pretty much ready. The market is meant to go down today. Okay. Looking at it, like the question that I asked, where do you see it going next? Do you guys see another gap fill right here? Okay. And I really love it if you guys interact and participate. Okay, that way we all learn more. So do you see a gap fill over here? This is there. Uh, the 4.30. Exactly. 4.33.01 to all the way to 4.30.92. So we have this mm -hmm. here. Why my bias would be the market going down more tomorrow? Okay. Look at my EMAs. Okay, I'm long way off my EMAs. Even if you look at the nine, okay, which is pretty fickle, we are pretty long way off. 20 is actually my most favorite EMA. So if I'm looking at 20, we are still long way off. Okay, so very, very likely, it might not at all happen. Okay, the market might move up tomorrow. Okay, but probability is much more higher when I look at it, that the market will try to fill this gap tomorrow or maybe on the next day. Okay, so this is the first thing that I will notice over here if I'm looking at it. And another thing that comes to my mind is, let me pull on my levels. Like right over here, the yellows are, are from a shorter time frame, four hours, and the whites are from a larger time frame. Okay, right around here, I do have a daily level sitting right here. Okay, somewhere around 432-ish. Okay, which basically I yeah, would be looking to touch first again. before we make any move to the upside. Okay, so this is the first thing that when I look at SPY, I'll be noticing. Another what question, level is that? That is right around here. Okay, 431 to let's say 432-ish. Okay, and this is the indicator that is available for all of you guys, okay, in the indicator section. So I built it a long time back to use for myself. If you wanna look at the support and resistances or the yeah, supply I'm and demand. Yeah, video. It's like a, from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. I'll probably come a little quiet earlier. Uh, like, if you don't mind, can you mute your mic? So what I was saying, this is the indicator that is available to all of you in the indicator sure. section. Like this little class video every Thursday. That's helpful. So, but yeah, I'll be back on, on 45 minutes. I'll add you on. Can you kindly mute your mic if you're not talking to us? Oh, shit. I, I removed them. <laughs> no worries. And, okay. No worries. <laughs> I meant to like click view yeah. profile. That's and fine. um. Okay. Yeah. So let's I booted <laughs> Okay, so basically this indicator is there right there in the indicator section. Okay, and it's free for all of you. Okay, cause I don't believe in making money, giving, selling indicators and that. Okay, so it's right here for you. I made it long time back for myself. Feel free to use it in your trading view charts. So if you wanna plot out the supply and demand zones automatically in any time zone, <laughs> this basically shows you. So I can see right here that I do have a zone here. Okay, on the okay. daily. If I move to a shorter time frame, 
same thing okay on four hours also i have a zone so i am seriously looking somewhere around 432 to 431 50 ish for this to move down before we make a move up okay so a uh, most likely would be to fill this gap before we see the next move okay because spy is very technical with a penny stock you don't get this comfort with spy your technical analysis is much more valid because penny stocks are typically pump and dump okay with spy you will follow it follows the trends follows your indicators much more because like everybody is technical so, i'll be back on later Jeez. Again, okay, if you're not talking here, please mute your mic, okay, because that disturbs everyone else here on the recording. Okay, so does that answer your question on SPY, what you had? Any other questions? Uh, according, so according to your charts, you're predicting tomorrow it's going to drop down to 432, 431, and then it might bounce up, or is it going to continue trending down? Two things. First of all, I am just another human being like you guys. I don't have a crystal ball, so I cannot predict. Okay, I can have a bias towards where it is going. As traders, okay, we don't, we should not try to predict. Okay, because like I said, we are very, very small fish in the ocean, right? We just follow where the tide goes. Okay, we can have our biases. If it works out, well and good. If not, okay, if SPY is moving up from here upwards, I will go for long trades. Okay, but my bias still now, my analysis still now is telling me we should be seeing more downside before we see upside again. And the other thing is, if you think of it, nothing moves up in a straight line, okay? Because nowhere you see this straight away moving over, okay, moving up. We can see zigzags. Always stocks move like in up, down, up, down like that. So we had a very long stretch of continuous up days, okay, or green days. So it's very normal behavior now that market might tend to go lower before it makes the next move. And there is another reason also I have this bias more towards the downside. Tomorrow is Friday, right? So on Friday, basically, there is usually heavy profit taking, mostly. Okay, so there is a high chance that there would be more selling and we might have like a slight snowball effect. I'm not expecting this to go down again drastically. Okay, all I'm expecting is probably to come around here. Okay. 431 ish and then make the next move if it happens well and good if it doesn't it doesn't okay we go like where the flow takes us okay okay what stocks are you looking at for tomorrow i trade only two things okay i trade only two things one is buy futures which is es and the other is QQQ Futures, which is NQ. Okay. Can we do QQQ? Sure. Why not? So what do you do with QQQ or SPY? You do options. Or someone said Tesla. If you want to do Tesla. We can oh. do Tesla as well. That's everyone's favorite stock. Alpha is the okay. expert on that. Okay. Now... Before we do that, let me ask you guys a question. Any idea why I trade only on like these two things? Why I don't trade on like multiple names and that? Is it because if it moves, it doesn't take a drastic move? Mm -hmm. Like like $10, $15 swings? Okay. Um, it's hard to keep up with multiple tickets all at once. I like that answer. Okay, yeah, look, I mainly trade in futures, right? So for futures, actually, the moves are very, very drastic. Okay, the moves are quite, quite drastic. Like, if you guys look at it, let me pull the screen. 
Like the only alert that went out from my side at 11, this was like 15,388, right? You guys can see it here, okay? Exactly at 11 a.m. on NQ. So if we look at 11 a.m. on NQ, So if you look at it, okay, my alert went out at 15,388 like you guys saw, right? Right around here. So once I'm ready on this trade, okay, I would have actually entered right here. Okay, this is exactly my entry on this trade. So from here, within the next 15 minutes or so, okay, we touched 15,432. Of course, no, I never knew like this was the top. Basically, I sold around this zone, okay, which was like a 40-point trade for me. So that's like 800 bucks on just one contract, okay. So this is how first futures move, actually. And it's that volatile, especially with like NQ. So volatility is there. That's the reason, basically, I like it, okay. The reason that I trade in only two or three names at the best, okay, and sometimes I look at gold futures. That's all I do these days. Okay, it's very simple. It is like when you are looking at something every single day, okay, to an extent, you are literally married to that particular ticker, okay, not married to the direction as Alpha says, okay, but you are married to the ticker almost, okay. So you very well know like how it behaves and it is much easier to trade it then. If you are jumping from one stock to another, to another, to another, you would never know that. And that was the main reason basically I left small caps. Small caps was like great money, but the problem was every single day, I had to find like what's flavor of the day. Okay, and after that, I'll show you guys actually my favorite chart setup for SPY and QQQ. Okay, so we have the QQQ here. And let's move on to daily for QQQ. Okay, tell me what you guys see. Do you guys see this much different than SPY? Let me ask you that question. No. Very close to the middle. Very close, right? Let's bring it side by side. Then I'll just delve into like what I want to show you guys. This is buy and this is QQQ. Both are on daily time frames. Look at the charts. Do they look very similar or not? They do. Yeah. They do, right? Can anyone tell me the reason for that? Because the tech stocks are so heavily weighted in the in the market, so they kind of mirror each other. Exactly. Okay, you are. That's a very good answer. Okay, so basically, spy is like the top five hundred stocks. Okay, in the New York Exchange, right, or in the U.S. main U.S. Exchange, whereas QQQ is Nasdaq top hundred. Now, spy is like you said heavily dominated by the tech stocks, okay? And somewhat, if you look at the composition of SPY, if you take like financials and tech, these basically make up most of SPY. And you have some energy stocks, like the very large caps, okay? And a few med uh, farmers, that's it. Okay, so the direction, basically, they follow each other very closely, most of the days. Only on days 
when basically you will see financials are not doing great, but technology is doing great. Okay, like financials and technology is moving in two different directions. Only on those rare days, you will see these two behaving differently. Okay, but on most of the days, both of them will behave very much similarly. Okay, you guys see the gap fill here? Same day. Okay, look here. You have a gap fill. Okay, second gap fill, same day. You have a gap fill. Gap down, same time. You have a gap down. Okay, picks, same time, pretty much. Okay, this one kept on like trying to go up. Didn't succeed ultimately, gave up. Okay, bottoms, pretty much on the same days. Okay, same time. So these behave very similarly. I'll show you a chart pattern, which basically in one of my screens, I just keep it on for the whole day. And if you're trading like either SPY or QQQ, I would say like this should be your go-to chart pattern. Okay, so this basically is a four by four chart that I use most commonly to have my spy. I'm not, you you can't turn it off. I'm not with the TV. I'm leaving. You can turn it off if you want. Can you kindly mute your mic if you are not talking to us? Oh. Okay. 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 Sorry, guys. So what's the question? I have to mute you. Okay, like if you ask, if he's asking a question, just let me know. I'll unmute him. Okay. Yeah. So what I was saying is, this is my favorite chart setup. Okay, I keep this on one screen whenever I'm trading. So here, basically, you see spy on the bottom two. Okay, this is a longer time frame, five minutes, and this is a shorter time frame. And you see QQQ here on the top. The reason I keep this is very simple. Because at times, there might be a level on SPY, okay, but I might not have a level on QQQ at that level, okay? So if I'm looking only at QQQ and I'm trading NQ or I'm trading QQQ options, I wouldn't even have a notion Okay, that from where or why the bounce is happening. But because SPY and QQQ follow each other so closely, like when I have both of these charts open simultaneously, okay, this just stays on a screen. I don't do literally anything except setting the pre-market level on this chart. That's it. Okay. So look here. This is a classic example. We are looking at QQQ. From here, QQQ rejected. We don't know why QQQ rejected here, right? We can see another rejection on QQQ right here. We don't know why QQQ rejected. I don't have any levels right there for QQQ. But if you look at my SPY chart, I do have my daily levels on SPY right around here. You can see the white line right here. So when I was trading NQ futures, the moment I look like SPY approaching a certain level, okay, came down from the 200 EMA, tried to go up. So this is the level that I'm looking at SPY, right? SPY is approaching a resistance level. So immediately, what would be my action? Okay, I would no longer be considering any trades until I see a confirmed breakout of this. Okay, confirmed breakout of QQQ on this level. Where am I getting the level? I'm actually looking at my SPY chart to trade basically QQQ levels. Okay, here. Order submitted. Thought we switched off this guy. Still going on. Sorry, Order guys. filled. Okay, same here. Look, again, QQQ is going up. I don't have any levels. Okay, as a trader, I need to be aware, right, where there might be resistance, okay, or where there might be support. So again, this is trying to go up. Okay, bouncing from SPY 200, trying to go up. I'm trading actually QQQ, but I'm looking at SPY here. Okay, so again, it rejects from here. I was actually prepared. I should be prepared because this is the place basically where it might reject from. Now, you guys remember when I was showing you my NQ trade for the day? Mm -hmm. 
which is right from 11 a.m., okay, right from here, round 388, okay, where I took the trade. And how do I know that where to get out of the trade? Okay, I don't have a crystal ball like I told you guys. Okay, I'm just another trader like you. So it's all based on my levels. That's it. Okay, there is no secret to it. So when I'm looking over here, I'm trading this thing. Okay, I went in right around here at 386-ish. Okay, and I am trying to understand where to get out. So my indication of that is right from here. Okay, I'm seeing right around this. I'm seeing like when my NQ chart is moving, SPY is moving here where my NQ chart is. So I got off right around here. Okay, I didn't wait for it to even test. I'm out. Okay, so that one trade in the day, that basically made up for my day. That's it. Okay, so this is a chart setup you guys should definitely consider if you have an extra monitor when you are trading SPY or QQQ. Okay, same thing. If we again look at it, okay, like, look right over here okay i have my 200 ema on spy i have my 200 ema on qqq sometimes spy might be coming to 200 ema for spy okay and bouncing right from there the 200 ema on qqq might not be there so these basically use each other as your leading chart if you are trading spy always keep an eye on qqq and vice versa if you're trading qqq Always keep an eye on SPY. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I find it very helpful. This has been literally like a game changer for me. Okay. So feel free to ask questions, please. Because if you ask questions, only then we can keep on learning from each other. And a lot of things that I use in my trading, I learned from all of some of you guys here. Yeah? Someone had a question. I have a question. Uh, Tell me. Yeah, what's the best way to find levels? Like, how do you find all your daily level, you know, hourly level? Okay, let me ask you another question before that. What type of a trader are you? I mean, what do you do? You swing, you scalp, uh swing you swing and what's your usual time frame when you are doing swings um i look at the one hour four hour one day one week oh uh, sorry i probably didn't get the question properly okay no I, when you are swinging okay you are swinging like spy options right or qqq options let's say so what's your holding period like how long far out do you buy the contracts usually how long are you in the trade like several days same oh day? uh no a couple of days a week couple of days to a week contracts all right yep perfect and how long do you usually hold them for um probably two days okay depending yeah all right so if that's the case okay there are only two time frames that you should be using to find your support and resistances you should start from the weekly Okay, and then you move down to daily. So this is your one. You can see like my charts are basically like having two colors, orange and white. Okay, so basically the daily and the weekly for you should be having like one color, which gives you a more stronger levels. Okay, and on a shorter time frame for you, the lowest you can go down is like four hours, nothing lower than that. Okay, now for me, as an example, I'm a scalper. Okay, my trades hardly last more than three to five minutes. 15 minutes is like an eternity for me, unless the setup is very valid. Okay, I don't stay in a trade that long. Three to five minutes, I'm usually done. Okay, sometimes a minute or two is more than enough for me. Okay, so my time frames comparatively is much more lower. Like if you look at my chart here, on NQ, all you will see is like at the end of each week, basically, I draw out the weekly levels, which is, if you notice, like you will notice like 
two blue lines here, okay, which are probably interloped with other lines. Okay, one right here, you can see a blue line. Okay, and the other blue line should be here. Okay, so that is there. Then what I do is, I look at just the high and low of today. That's it. Okay, so I looked at the high and low of today, which are my two white lines. Then basically, because I'm like a much shorter time frame trader than you, my levels here are based on 30 minutes mainly. Okay, and to where to draw your levels? Simply put, what I try to do is, my rule of thumb is, I try to see from where the trade bounced, okay, or where there are pivot points, okay, the trade changed direction. And I try to find at least three touches. So if you look at here, okay, the touches might not be exactly, but I try to go as, as reasonably as possible. So if you look at this particular line here, one touch, two touch, three touch. That's it. That's why this line exists. Same with this one. Okay. That I have it here on the 30 minutes. This is one. This is two. This is three. And this one basically was my pivot actually for the session when we started in the morning today. So that's how basically I get my lines. Okay. The first thing that you need to consider is whether, what's your trading time frame? Are you doing like one minute? Okay, very short time frame trader. You're a scalper like me. Okay, or you are intraday. You stay in a trade for 30 minutes to an hour within the day. Or you're like swinging it anything more than a day. So based on that, you should actually come down to like, okay, what time frames should I consider for my levels? Does that make sense for you? Yeah, got it. So if you're like a day trader, Mm -hmm. uh, like, let's say if you're following alpha trader, you know, with the spy and all that good stuff, Tesla, um, you will look into like the 15, the five, the 15 and the 30. Five Mac for me, basically when I trade, okay, that five is my reference time frame. Typically five is typically my reference time frame. When I look at it, okay, that I look at five actually more for confirmations because one minute is too fickle. And on the one minute chart, I execute the trades. Okay, so one, five is there. But if you are confused about the trend, you see like what time frames are basically bookmarked in my chart. Okay, five, 15, 30, one hour, four hour. Okay, if I'm confused, I cannot understand the trend. Looking at five minutes, I will go to the next one, which is 15. If I'm still confused, I will move a level up. Okay. If I'm still confused, I will look at the next level up. And typically when I'm trading, I continuously switch between time frames in my reference time chart because I want to see like if we are close to any levels of any of the larger time frames. Like on NQ right now, okay, if we were looking because you can trade futures 23 hours a day, the ideal trade would be like right where basically we have crossed this level. Okay. And we have confirmed it. How do we say get a confirmation here? Very simply put, look at it. I had a level right here. Okay. Then at 740-ish, we straight away moved from this bar. Okay. With this bar, basically, we broke that level, went up. I'm not in the trade yet, if I was taking this trade. What I'm looking at, I'm looking at where is the next candle closing? Okay, are we closing below? Are we coming down below? It's a red candle, but this is my confirmation candle. We are not closing anywhere below. We are closing right on that same level. So this is the notion basically to get into the trade. Okay, my first target would be view up right over here. Okay, my Next target, if I'm looking at view up, okay, we crossed view up. Are we coming down? No. My next target is basically where I have my next level. Okay, you went through. My next target is basically my 200 EMA. My trading style is very, very simple. Okay, and that helps me to make money. I'm happy with it. I don't use any fancy indicators. I don't use very complicated strategies. Very simple strategies. That's where I found success, and I stick to that. Any idea, guys? 
if you were taking this trade, how much money you would have made? The people, uh, I can see few people here who trade futures. Okay, so you are not allowed to give the answers from anyone else. No clue. Take a guess. You're not going to lose money taking a guess. Well, you said 800 before. That was like in the morning, right? That was a huge 40 pointer trade, right? <laughs> so on NQ, so basically, we actually calculate by the points. Okay, like the points you see here, each one point is 20 bucks. Okay, so this move here, once you saw that the, this level is holding up, say you went in the next candle, okay, right on the 9 EMA, say you went in at 218 and you were holding, let's say, even up to this level, 236, that's like 18 points. So even in one contract, that's about 360 bucks. So this is not a bad trade at all. Okay, this is the reason basically I like trading futures because like I work full time. So during the day, often I can't catch a trade. Most of my trades is usually during the early morning before market even opens between 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. or 9 a.m. or sometimes during lunch breaks. Okay, and I'm done for the day. Okay, so if you're trading like SPY options or QQ, Q options, I would definitely suggest look into futures. Okay, so we still got 15 minutes. Tell me guys, what more questions do you have? Anything from anyone? We are all here to learn. What platforms do you use for trading futures? Okay, so a little bit more about myself. Okay, so I'm a funded trader. Do you have, do you guys have an idea what like funded traders are? Very briefly, okay, we don't trade no. with our own money. Okay, so what we do is typically, like there are lots of firms out there. So these are called prop firms or funded account companies, okay. Mainly for Forex and futures, these are used. So these companies basically give you the fund to trade. Now, what happens is, they will not give you the fund just because you want it, okay? All of them usually have some or other type of evaluations. So once you pass those evaluations, okay, then they give you the money to trade. Basically, you are trading with their money and you share the profits. The firm that I am with typically, so I keep 90% of what I make and they keep 10%. I'm very happy with it. Even if those guys wanted 20% instead of 10%, I would say that please do that. Okay, because like the moment you don't trade with your own money, the stress goes much, much lower. Okay, that's there. And from my funded account company, my platform that they allow me to trade in is Ninja Trader. Okay, so it's not by choice. It's more by what you say, my hands are tied. Okay, so I do have to use Ninja Trader. So initially I was like very much against it. I was not comfortable like doing it. Okay, but then again, once I got the hang of it, I simply love this platform now. Okay, so you can use NinjaTrader, you can use Tradovate. These are the most common platforms that are used for like trading futures. And if you guys wanna know like how to become a funded trader, okay, or more interested in futures, drop by to our channel. Okay, we got some great material in the education section. Okay, and in case you are wondering where we are, we are exactly in the same server. Okay, Alpha just puts us a little bit lower because like, I guess like we are pretty late into the game. So right around here, if you scroll down, you will find us. Okay, this is the futures place basically. So this is a futures room where we do have a, quite a few traders here. Okay, then the alerts basically go out from my bot here in the alerts. And in the education section, we do have some good materials for you guys to get started. And moreover, if you want, okay, you can always DM me. I try to answer as quickly as possible. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, 
but definitely you should consider futures if you're trading options. The reason I moved to futures was pretty simple. Okay, that futures doesn't have all these tricks that you do in options. Because I was doing like options, I was being pro okay, the trade moved into the direction that I wanted, but I was doing like zero DT. So due to the premium burn, okay, or the theta, whatever you say, at times, even when the trade moved into my direction, I was on the not making money, okay, I was rather losing money. So that initially got me interested in the futures. And that plus like the other thing is like, unlike options, these contracts technically never expire. So let's say if I'm buying a zero DT contract for today, my contract is worth nothing, okay, at the end of today. With futures, that never happens. And the other thing is like the comfort of trading like 23 hours a day, especially like after being a funded account, having a funded account, okay, that is great. So I don't think I'm ever gonna go back to options. Any more questions? How much is a contract? Because uh, you said that on, one contract was about here. Well, you said that you okay. said the profit would have been about three hundred dollars per contract. How yep. much would you have spent on the contract? Okay, so typically the way futures work is okay, especially if you're with a prop firm or with a funded account company, they give you a limit of like how many contracts you can trade in. Okay, so currently I have like three funded accounts. Two of those allow for me to take up to 10 contracts and one allows for up to four contracts. Sorry, just bear with me one second. Uh, Baba, just after five minutes, okay? Sorry, that's my five-year-old, okay? So typically, if you are doing this with your own money, you are looking at 15 to 43 and I believe like each contract has five lots okay made of five so if you were trading with your own money basically this is the amount you'd be needing to trade just one contract but most of the people that i know or most of us those who trade in the futures room over here most of us are with funded comp account companies okay like most of the guys once i got them into the idea of like what a funded account is and all that we don't trade with our own money anymore Okay, thank you. Wow. Okay. It's pretty easy. It's not very difficult, trust me, to get funded. So if someone that is brand new, what would your recommendation be? How to get started with features? First thing you should do is you should go over all the materials in the education section. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is number one. Once you have done that, okay, you should basically start looking at the QQQ, sorry, and the spy charts. If you have already looked into those, okay, understand how they behave, look into the NQ and the ES charts. So once you are comfortable, and the first thing that you will discover, futures move exactly in the same manner during the day as the underlying asset. Okay, so if you're trading NQ, it will have exactly the same movements as QQQ during the day. If you're trading ES, it will have exactly the same movements as SPY. So that's something you should be looking at. Okay, so once you get the hang of it, then I would say that sign up with a prop firm, especially when they offer discounts. Okay, because most of the time these firms offer like 70, 80, or even 90% of the fees. So typically an account, a 50K account, which allows you to trade like 10 contracts, Typically, the charge for doing an evaluation on that ranges anywhere from 150 to 200 bucks. But if you are taking it on an 80% off or 90% off, it costs you mm -hmm. like what? 30 to $40. Okay. So take that, then delve your hand into it. Okay. And I can literally assure you or write it down. Okay. The first two or three attempts, you will fail. That's the typical journey of a funded account trader. Okay. Happened with me with almost everyone that I know, okay? So after that, you get the hang of it. But think of it. The price you are paying is probably, what, 100 bucks, 120 bucks, okay, even mm -hmm. failing three times before you get the hang of it. So after you pass, basically, then you start trading on the real account, what they give you, and you start making money, real money. 
Well, well, that's great. How long does it take to get your money? Your your ninety percent. How long does it take? Is it deposited instantly or? Okay, so that's a very good question. Okay, so different firms have different rules. Okay, some allow you to take the profit every day. Some allow you once a month. Okay, the firm that I'm with, they allow me to take profits three ta two times a month. From 1st to 5th, okay, I can put in a request. Or from 15th to 20th, I can put in a request. The reason I have three funded account is like sometimes on one account, I might not have enough money to take out between those windows. Okay, but having three account, it allows me to draw down from at least one account in every window. Well, okay, thank you. Okay. Feel free to ask questions, okay? And if you have more, feel free to DM me. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? Hi, can you please take a look at NVIDIA? Sure, why not? Thank you. Tell me what you're looking at. Um, I was looking really for a put for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, it went to 482 the high today, but mm -hmm. when I'm looking at the, let me see, put it short in, put it short. In the five minutes, mm -hmm. it closed. It closed below this 20 and the 60 EMA. Mm -hmm. And the 200 EMA had it at 468.24. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you need to make... do next? I'm looking, it's in the 30 minutes. Okay, I don't trade NVIDIA, but let's see what we can okay. get over here right now, just looking at the chart. Uh -huh. Okay. Someone had a question, right? From where you draw your support and resistances. So if you looked at it, okay, I'm drawing this in like less than a minute, just looking at this chart for the first time now, right? And I'm moving mm -hmm. from my right, so I'm from my left towards my right, okay, on the daily time frame. So I'm done. Here, let's see what else we have. Are we missing any key levels? That's what I'm looking at. And if you see what I do is, okay, I'm looking here. Okay, this is exactly where I was looking, but I actually click the line here because like you look at a level and you see if there's a similar level on a more closer time mm -hmm. frame more recently. Okay, you try to tend it near that. So if we look at NVIDIA now, okay, coming back. Now, this is a level you can see we tried to break Okay, right here, the 482 level once mm -hmm. failed. Okay, second time failed, came down, moved right up, tried again. Okay, today didn't really work out. Now, if we are looking at a shorter time frame, let's say an hour to 30 minutes, what do we see? Okay, we see like it is moving up. Yep, you're you have downtrended actually, you broke down below your 20. Okay, I don't really mm -hmm. care much about the nine. Okay, the nine is very good for scalping, but 20 is like I told you, my favorite EMA. So if I'm looking here, it broke below 20. Let's look at slightly larger time frame. On one hour, it also broke below. On four hour, your trend is intact. Okay, so on the shorter time frames, yep, I'm looking mm -hmm. at more downside. But if I look at slightly longer time frame, okay, on your daily or on your four hours, my trend still is not broken. Okay, 
Oh, okay. You can see my trend is right there. Now, the whole market seems to be pulling down today. NVIDIA, basically, it went up. But still, it closed significantly lower, right? So you basically yeah. closed all the way almost. And what I'm looking at here is that you did not recover. When you went down, you straight away kept on going down, okay? And I don't see any recovery till now. So what I'll be looking at, I'll be more looking at if your time frame is shorter time frame, I'll definitely be looking at puts over here, okay? But where do you want to take the puts? Tell me. Tomorrow morning, um, once it opens, do you want to take the put right here? Why right there? No. Around 467? Or do you want to take the puts somewhere else? And what's your price? Somewhere today? else. I think we should sell below the support at 463. Okay. You're going to wait that long? Or if it's under the 200 EMA. Is it 30 okay. minutes? This is a one hour chart. Let's make it 30 um, minutes. Okay, we made okay. 30 minutes. So where do you want to take the puts? I will take the put if I have a full candle under the 60. On the 60. All right, let's bring yeah. 60 EMA. The green is your 60 now. Okay. Okay. So... You want to take the put right below when you see a full candle below. Yeah. Okay. What's the reason for? Is that? it white or is it white there answer? There is no right. Or... There is no wrong answer. Okay. As long as you can justify your answer, you're good. Why do you want to do that? Um, if it's in the thirty minutes and we have a full candle mm -hmm. above, below the sixty, there's a good chance that will will go down to touch the two hundred. Keep on going oh. down. Yeah. It's not a bad answer, okay. absolutely. Okay, your logic is there. That's all I wanted to see. Okay, it's very important that you have a plan. Okay, that and till where do you want to ride it? Mm -hmm. What's your profit target? Uh, we'll get out at the 200. Oh. Okay, your first profit target should be around here, and second one like here. Okay. Oh, I'm just put, oh, okay, okay, I see. Okay. okay. It, okay. Yeah. Now, look, for me, it would be slightly different. Okay. If I was trading mm -hmm. this, I would be, if I'm going for puts, I would be actually mm -hmm. look at two different ideas over here. Okay. One mm -hmm. is, let's make it bigger. Mm -hmm. One would be, I would try to take the put as high as possible to maximize my gains. Okay. okay. Looking at this, I am pretty sure tomorrow it is going to touch your 20 EMA. It's not okay. straight away going to die. Okay. If I say it went up over your 20 EMA and failed, this would be an ideal place to take the puts. Okay. Going up and then coming down. Okay. Somewhere okay. a little bit up. Okay. This is one. And the other one that I might be looking into is like if it is not going up the moment like you your 20 and your 60 crosses okay more to the downside mm -hmm. that's your confirmation of going for the puts okay i like your idea of like when the full candle closes below 60 to go that's also a superb idea and probably you're a pretty conservative trader right you don't want to take much it, risk that's many times before so i'll try to be yeah, here. Okay, I'm also very conservative. Those who have traded with me know. Okay, so if you're waiting for a full candle close below 60, it's not a bad strategy at all. But the thing is, your entry would be a bit late. Okay. Okay, so in that case, I would say that go to a shorter time frame, probably use five minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, on five minutes, if you're doing it, it touches it because our green line is 60 now. It touches mm -hmm. 60, fails from here, go right in. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So does oh, that help? All right. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's Michelle. just like, I mean, like, you already have the idea. Okay, all I wanted to see is, like, whether you have a plan for it. Like, before you go yes. into a trade, you need to have a plan. That's it. Yes, the plan. In okay. Yeah. So that's that, um, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so 
If there are no more questions, okay. Does anyone have any questions? Sorry. If not, thank you once again for coming over, okay, spending your time with me. And let's call it a night then. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good thank night. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye.